Okay, pop quiz. It's 2016. Who are the world's biggest smartphone makers? Oh right, Samsung, Apple, Huawei, Oppo, and Vivo. Wait, who? Yeah, that's right, Oppo and Vivo, two Chinese brands that have become the most popular phones in China this past year. But wasn't it just last year that everyone was talking about how Xiaomi was the most valuable startup in the world and how it was going to be the next Samsung? Whatever happened to them? Competition, that's what happened. What 2016 has shown is just how brutal the Chinese smartphone market is. Even as overall sales have slowed, the major players keep duking it out. Oppo and Vivo have landed a bunch of great hits this year as their celebrity ads and countless stores have shown their full impact. Not long ago, people praised Xiaomi for its ambition, but turns out they weren't the only ones with big plans. To understand how Xiaomi lost its luster, we have to understand how they grew so fast in the first place. In 2010, when CEO Lei Jun started Xiaomi, Samsung, Nokia, Huawei, and ZTE were selling the most phones in China. But as was the fashion at the time, phone makers would put out dozens of mediocre phones with confusing names. Ah yes, who can forget the Huawei C8800, or U8110, or the ZTE Blade V880. Lei Jun wanted Xiaomi to be different. Like Apple, they would focus their efforts on a few great products. They would take advantage of the e-commerce boom and only sell phones online, and they would build a community of die-hard fans who would promote their phones by word of mouth. In short, he wanted to show China could make a great smartphone. And Xiaomi followed through. In 2012 through 2014, Chinese people bought up a ton of Xiaomi phones. During its online promotions, the company would sell out hundreds of thousands of phones within minutes. Just a year after launch, the Xiaomi phone was already the third most popular model of phone in China, after the iPhone 4 and 4S. And Xiaomi came out with model after model and product after product. There were the Mi 2 through Mi 5 phones, the more economical Redmi phones, the TV, the rice cooker, the air purifier for China's smog-filled cities, all of it made with the same desire to be best in category. Xiaomi even brought on Google's top product manager for Android, a guy named Hugo Barra to lead its international efforts. By the end of 2014, Xiaomi was on top of its game. That year, it sold 61 million phones, making it the top phone seller in China. It also raised over a billion dollars from investors and was valued at a whopping $45 billion. As many noted, this made it the most valuable startup in the world at the time, even ahead of Uber. And it had done this by making high-quality phones that sold for a fraction the price of competitors. Meanwhile, Lei Jun was making a name for himself as one of China's leading product-focused tech visionaries, and was making the rounds at industry conferences and talk shows. But something started changing in 2015. Xiaomi estimated at the beginning of the year it would sell 100 million phones that year. By March, that estimate dropped to 80 million phones. And when the year was finished, it had only sold 70 million phones. It still led the pack along with Huawei, but these results were seriously disappointing compared to previous years. A few things were happening. Huawei, which was a leading phone brand in the pre-Xiaomi days, was able to transition into the new age and was giving Xiaomi really stiff competition. It sold phones through its new vmall.com website and launched a new internet-focused sub-brand called Honor. It also consolidated its product line around its flagship P-series phones, which was targeted to the high end and sold for over $500, putting it in the same league as Samsung. This wasn't only profitable, but something that other Chinese phone makers weren't confident enough to do yet. At the same time, other traditional players were dropping the ball. Lenovo seriously botched its acquisition of Motorola in 2014 and had a hard time positioning both Motorola and Lenovo branded phones in the market. And ZTE, which was an internationally recognized brand, struggled to adapt to the new waves of marketing and distribution, since it had always relied on big carriers like China Mobile to sell its phones. Something else happened too. For the first time, two smaller brands started showing up among the top five phone sellers. These were Oppo and Vivo, 
two brands known for targeting young, fashionable customers and having a ton of stores in China's smaller cities. And in the years since then, they've become the number one and number two best-selling phone brands in China. It almost feels like they came out of nowhere and sucker punched Xiaomi and Huawei. Look at these numbers. In the third quarter of 2016, both Oppo and Vivo were selling 100% more phones than last year third quarter. Meanwhile, Xiaomi and Apple sales were down 40 and 30% compared to last year. That's a catastrophe. Apple has its own challenges as the upper end of the Chinese smartphone market has become saturated. But in the middle market, it's clear Xiaomi has lost out to Oppo and Vivo. Oppo and Vivo, of course, didn't come out of nowhere. They'd been playing a long game and had done things very differently than Xiaomi. While Leijun had been talking up word of mouth as a core feature of Xiaomi's marketing, Oppo and Vivo spent lavishly on TV advertising, getting big stars to appear in its ad spots. Like this one with Taiwanese actor Eddie Pang. Vivo X9, Vivo. Or this one with China's most popular boy band, TF Boys. The two companies also sponsor some of the most popular variety shows on TV. And while Xiaomi was pioneering an online sales model, Oppo and Vivo opened thousands of physical store locations across China's smaller cities and towns. In some cities, you can pass multiple Oppo and Vivo stores just walking down one street. Over 75% of Oppo and Vivo sales are through these physical stores. It's also common for employees at both companies to perform dance routines to draw attention to their stores. Okay, so if you're laid to at Xiaomi, how do you respond? Well, the overall shape of the field is starting to emerge. The key issues are, do you sell both a mid-range phone and a flagship phone? And in terms of marketing, are you primarily online or offline, and do you do a lot of advertising? Xiaomi could go tit for tat. If Oppo and Vivo are so successful with physical stores, then that's what they do too. And in fact, Leijun has announced Xiaomi will open stores in a thousand locations by 2020. Xiaomi has also started to use advertising to shape its brand, like this spot encouraging people to go explore and live for the fever. Or this spot with megastar Tony Leung philosophizing about what makes the Mino 2 beautiful. Xiaomi can also distinguish itself by moving into truly innovative high-end phones like it's done with the Mi Mix, which is the first time a Chinese company has come out with a stunning new vision for smartphones. Meanwhile, if Oppo and Vivo want to stay ahead, they both need to do more online marketing. They both barely sold any extra phones this year on Singles Day, which is primarily an online event even though it's the biggest shopping day of the year. It's also no surprise that Huawei has held up quite well against competition from Oppo and Vivo. They had flagship phones in the P9 and Mate 9, as well as a mid-range phone in the Honor series. And they've had a big presence both online and off and run lots of ads. Their only move this year has been to firm up their mid-range with the Nova phone, which is targeted towards the same young people Oppo and Vivo are after. The biggest brands know they need to dominate each of these areas to stay on top. And other phone brands like Meizu, Leiko, 360, and ZTE's Nubia line aren't out of the running yet either. They can use the same strategies to challenge the market leaders. And let's not forget Apple. In China, Apple has stayed the super deluxe high-end brand that people aspire to. But the reality is that mid-range phones from Chinese companies now have comparable quality and feature sets and cost less than half what iPhones cost. So can Apple hold its ground? Will they have to introduce a separate mid-range model that's not just last year's iPhone? We know they introduced the iPhone 6 Plus specifically to cash in on the Chinese market for big phones, but offering a cheaper model has always been something they're reluctant to do. 
or will they just stay high-end and focus on a new emerging market like India? Overall, the Chinese smartphone wars are not over. We are only a few years into the age of the smartphone, and there are plenty more reversals and triumphs to come. The industry has a bunch of strong players and moves super fast. This is a great time to start paying attention because the phones they use in China will be the phones we use soon. These companies all want to be global. A few of them already are. So if you find yourself choosing a Vivo or Xiaomi phone one day, you'll know that the path they took to reach you was a long and cruel one, with ups and downs and many slain adversaries along the way. Smartphones have become ordinary objects in our lives, but for the Chinese companies making them, they've meant guts and glory as much as selfies or instant car rides. Hey guys, thanks for watching. If you want more videos about all the crazy stuff on China's internet, don't forget to hit subscribe. And check out my blog for some really interesting articles on the same topic. I'll catch you next time.